Hey, this is Crystal from Homestead Odyssey. Today, we are gonna introduce you to our goats. We're also having to give some of our baby goats their shots, the CD and T vaccine. And we will also be tagging our goats ears. I'll also have some clips from this weekend of us working on building the new goat structures. They're gonna be temporary structures, but we have to get them built because we have to move them next weekend. Getting ready to move our goats out of the 4-H pig barn that we've been allowed to keep them in. This is the 4-H goat barn, which will be getting renovated later this year, but we for now have to dig out the snow and build some better structures so that the babies are kept warm with the moms. We will be doing that today. The fence is pretty well frozen to the ground. Been able to break up some of the ice, but we're pretty exhausted, so we're gonna work on building the shelter for a little bit and digging out a little bit of the snow further in the pen. So there's already some enclosed structures in there, but with the snow and the wind, we want to give them a little more protection. So we're building out a frame so that we can put plywood on top and then build a door. And it looks like he needs my help, so we'll be right back. Here's what we have so far. So we've got this piece of wood on the outside of the pin, which will block wind and snow, and then Whatever wind and snow goes through this area, we'll have the door blocking up for the shelter here. So hopefully that'll give them a safe place where no wind, no snow or rain can blow into. We're looking for more plywood. We're gonna go clear across the top here so that this whole top will be enclosed. So it's not beautiful, it's not perfect, but this is very temporary. Our goats will probably only be in here a month or two, maybe three at the most, and then we'll have to temporarily move them again because they're gonna enclose this entire goat barn. And then we'll have a closed structure. And here is the progress that we made today. We still have some more digging to do, free up the fences. We don't have to move our goats till next week, but we really wanted to get this part done so it was ready for them.
Okay, so this is our our uh, water jug that we felt up, filled up out there, 55 gallons, our, our barrel. We filled up with 50 gallons. You can get it for a penny a gallon here at the horse corrals. And this is where we put it into so that we can be able to fill up the goat's water after we're done. There's many, or sorry, Stella over there in the background eating her grain still. So when we run it down to these little five gallon uh, barrels or sorry containers and then we empty them into the big barrel so the reason why we bring water and store it down here is during the winter time the water is shut off at this barn and before we were filling up these little containers and hauling them from home and sometimes i'd forget and sometimes they'd spill in my car and so by filling up this 55 gallon water barrel and putting a heater in it, we're able to keep water down here and only fill up the large barrel twice, or every two weeks we typically fill it up. And then we just fill up this container and go dump it into their water. Okay, thank you, Sam. This is Stella, she is our boar goat. She's the first goat we've ever had. Um, she is a... Um, what's a boar goat used for, a typically? A boar goat is typically used for, um, meat. She recently had two babies, a boy and a girl. This is Charlotte. She is a boar goat. She is Stella's girl. Um, she was born first. This is Tank. He is the one that I'm planning to bring to sh fair and sell at auction. He is a boar goat. Um, he is a boar goat. He is Stella's baby. She, he is the last baby born, but he already is the heaviest. Okay, this is Minnie. She's a Nubian milker. She had two babies. This one. Yeah, she's a um, pretty good dairy goat. She produces about well, two, up to two quarts a day. I think this is the most we've gotten with her. This is Charlie Brown, and it's Minnie's, his, one, Minnie's boy, baby goat. Mm-hmm. And, and we're gonna we're gonna turn him into a weather for 4-H, right? Yeah. He'll be a weather goat. Okay. And so he was his dad is a boar goat, and his mom is a Nubian, so he's a Nubian boar cross. Uh -huh. Oh, and he wants out of here. This is Lydia. Um, tra like Charlie Brown, he's a she is a. Nubian Borgo mix. Um, she is also Minnie's baby. She is the girl. Um, she is going to be, we're gonna be selling her to another 4-H member or in our group. We have our vaccine here, and for goats, they need two milliliters. So inside this is a syringe with a needle already in it. We're going to take the lid off of our syringe, then you fill your syringe up with air to the amount that you need, okay? Like that. Then you insert the needle, take the cap off. Then there's a little rubber part up here. You're gonna insert your needle into that, turn it upside down, push all the air into the vaccine and this creates a vacuum. So it will already start filling up your needle and make it so you don't get air into your syringe. And get it up to the two milliliters. So the CDMT, and you have to check what the type of vaccine you're doing, is called a sub-Q or a subcutaneous vaccine. Are you biting me? A subcutaneous doesn't go into the muscle, it goes into the skin. Oh. And she's mad more because I won't let her go play. So, a good spot is above their shoulder. Pull out the skin. into the skin. Here we go. 
What we are tagging our goats with is what is called a scrapies tag. This tag allows our baby goats to be traced back to our family. Um, we have on here is the number of our goats, so the number of kid goats, so that we can keep track in our records who's number one, two. So on the back side, along with the number, what number that goat is, the top line is our scrapies number for our family. So any goat with that number on the top, it can be traced back to our family in the Wyoming database. So it's by law, every goat that's sold needs to have a scrapies tag. So do the tag, you're gonna put the pointed in on the top. There's kind of a metal part sticking out. And then you're putting the part that it's going into on the bottom. You want the numbers on the outside because this is gonna be clamped together on their ear. There are lines of cartilage in their ear. You do not want to hit these lines of cartilage, okay? Um, and then there's arteries that run through the middle and along the sides, and we don't want to hit those as well. You don't want to be right up in their ear because those can bother, bother them, but you also don't want it down here because it can catch on things. So we are going to aim for... Right in here, right about right there. Is that look good? Huh, extra tight. and shots are probably a bit more traumatizing for us, they're right back up and playing. 